Hey, hey, and welcome back to Working Wednesday. I'm Caroline Cole, and it's good to be here. Um, today we're talking about maximizing your natural voice as a voice actor. Of course, we all love to make silly voices and characters, and that's like our favorite thing. Maybe just my favorite thing to do as voiceover actors, but the reality is that you're going to be making most of your money, most of that bread and butter cash from your natural voice. Of course, that is until you break into the Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks area. Then you'll be making that cash off of whatever voice you want to, or whatever voice they hire, which is another reason to maximize your natural voice. So we're gonna to talk today about three ways you can maximize your natural voice and thus work smarter and not harder. So, the first way is to listen to yourself. You wanna think about how you really sound. And this means you're going to have to be really honest with yourself and listen back to your voice with a non-judgmental ear. That also means that you might want to ask some other people for their opinions, trusted friends and family only. And I would suggest that you start by doing a quick Google search for 100 words to describe the voice or even more. However many you can get is the best. So you're going through, you're getting those opinions, you're picking some words for your voice. Those will help you get a baseline for what your natural voice will be hired for. For example, the words that describe my voice and when I talk to friends and family, of course, was a middle to deep sounding female voice. That is what I have. Some describe it as a little bit raspy. Um, people describe it as clear because I speak really clearly and sometimes bright if I'm giving a particularly commercial read that can come across as bright. That's really in my natural voice tone. So those three to four descriptors really help me understand that voices like mine are being hired for commercial projects, they're being hired for non-fiction narration projects, and that sultry raspy stuff goes real easy into some romance territory, but we'll talk about that in a couple weeks on the blog. When I'm thinking of characters that are close to these word descriptors, often what comes to me are moms. Um, I've been described as good soccer mom voice as well. Um, professional working women like doctors, lawyers, scientists, etc. Um, female villains because I have a deep voice and I love an evil laugh. <laughs> right? I've been hired for that a couple of times. It's so much fun. Um, sullen teenagers also fit within my natural range. Like, uh, mom, this is so close to my real voice, right? It's kind of the same pitch. Um, for those, I don't have to hop up into a higher register, so that's better for me um, to play these characters. I can sustain their voice a lot longer than I can if I have to talk way up here. Like, that's really hard for me, so I can't do that for very long. Um, or boys, like if you're doing a boy, great, but like, I won't be able to do that quite as many hours as I will be able to read in my natural voice. So my voice wears out quicker when I do those kinds of characters and they only work for shorter projects. In short, I can make more money and thus do more work if I'm maximizing that natural voice. So the next thing to do is a bit of research. You need to find out who to compare yourself to. Usually I wouldn't promote competition or comparison, but here it's helpful for research. So who do you sound like? Where do you hear your type of voice the most? Again, you may want to call on friends and family to help you out here. Sometimes people will come to me and be like, were you on a such and such commercial? I swear I heard your voice the other day, blah, blah, blah. So then when I hear that, or the next time you hear that, you want to start putting in a little more research. What was the kind of commercial? What TV show do you think you heard me on, right? For me, I hear a lot about commercials, like radio commercials or TV ads. People don't often tell me, I heard you on Nick Jr. the other day. No, my voice is a lot more natural than that is what I use a lot of my voiceover for. I have a good commercial voice. Again, that bright and clear description that we said earlier. If someone tells you something, they heard your voice here or there, get that research out of them. Find what you sound like and find who you sound like and find out where those voices are getting work. The third thing you can do is maximize your own interests and hobbies and expertises. 
For example, do you have any background knowledge in accounting? Maybe that was your undergrad degree and then you took a swift curve to voice acting. Maybe you work as an engineer during the day and you do voice acting on the weekends. Maybe you have a lot of knowledge or interest in handicrafts and things that you make your own, DIY stuff. Whatever it is that you love, there is a voiceover niche for that. So bringing your um, expertise and special interests can really help you even book those gigs, um, especially if they line up with the kind of voice you already have. So you wanna check in for that. For example, um, I have a master's in theater education. Sometimes I teach theater on the side, I love to do it. So for educational projects, I bring up that credential and I'm like, oh, hey, like, by the way, I know all this stuff and um, it would be better to have a voice actor who knows how to pronounce all those words, right? So that kind of stuff. Um, or also I am a yoga therapist and I've studied yoga for a long time. So if I'm ever doing like wellness or meditation track, I know that my voice lines up well with those kinds of tracks and I bring it up in my submission. So when you're submitting auditions, and um, sending in a little note to the producer, you can feel free to include your expertise and special knowledge here too. That can be a way to set you apart from the competition. So to sum up, the best way, the best quick ways to maximize your natural voice are by learning what you sound like and then comparing yourself to what's out there. And finally, maximizing your special hobbies, interests, expertises, niches, what have you. Within those niches that fit you particularly well, you'll want to learn to excel within those niches. So as you gain um, experience and expertise within those niches, you get better and better and better. So you might want to work with a voiceover coach. You might want to have a voiceover meetup group that like gives each other feedback once a month. You might be reading blogs and watching videos like this one. Hey right? You're doing research and getting better at your craft so that you can excel within those niches. Um, experience begets experience. And of course, remember that you're not married to these niches, okay? So you are also going to want to find ways to stretch out of your niche and challenge yourself as an actor. Those are fun ways to do new and interesting projects as well so you don't stagnate. But remember, these voices that your natural voice are are the ones that you can speak the longest, the most safely, and still be healthy while you're speaking for four or five hours in that voice every day. Um, so that's going to help you maximize your time and your voice so that you can stay safe and healthy and get lots and lots and lots of work. So hooray, work in that sweet spot, everybody. Best of luck, my voiceover actors, this week, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.